Did I ever tell you about that time my dad took me into the city to see a marching man? I I don't know. I feel like I feel like I'd remember if you'd told me about this. Okay, so when I was young, right? Yeah. My dad took me into the city on on the, on the pretense of, uh, that we were going to see a marching band. Yeah, okay, that sounds right? like a nice, fun, ch- age-appropriate day out for a child. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. You know, it'd be nice. You know, catch some music. You yeah. know, I I always quite appreciate. It. I love the big drums. As oh a yeah, kid. getting to watch them. The bum, 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 yeah, see bum, them do the, all the all the drumming as they march. Yeah, it's quite a spectacle. Got into the city. Yeah, we're, we're walking down a lot of quite quite seedy-looking alleyways and and, yeah. and back areas. Lots of lots of sort of warehouse space. I mean, presumably that's just on the way there, you know. Well, that's what I thought. And then we sort of stopped outside this one place and he said, Will you defeat them, you demons? And all the non-believers, the plans that they have made? And I was like, um, I, y- sh- y- yeah, yes. And he handed me this sword and just kicked me into this warehouse. At which point I had to, you know, defeat all the demons and all the non-believers, the plans that they had made. Set fire to those. Well... I, I, goodness! It sounds like I, I'm, gl- I'm glad you survived. I'm guessing, I'm guessing that means you, you were the savior of the broken, the beaten, and the damned at that point. Also, got to come out. Ah, oh, that's that, that, That's how I got transed. Oh, is that is that how it happened? That's how it happened. Greetings, strangers, queer and pleasant. I'm not Laura Kate Magnadale. And I'm not Jane Eris Magnadale. And welcome to another episode of Queer and Pleasant Strangers. It's a podcast where two queer trans women, that's us, where we, we, we do smooches on each other, we're yeah, wifey we types. We just have a bit of a catch up about the media we've consumed in the week. Nom, nom, and tasty media. Do, do silly stuff to try and make each other laugh. Yeah. We have a bit of a giggle in each other's presence. Yeah, and if you happen to enjoy that, then all the better. That's a nice little bonus. A little bonus yeah. for you. Yeah. What have you been playing this week? I've been playing it, vaguely trying to keep my voice intact. You know it's so much easier to keep your voice intact when you're not in a house with a hole in the frickin' roof. Yeah, you, and all, all the damp. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I mean, what? What have you been playing? <laughs> I played Commander Keen Chapter 1. Okay, is this... The share this... game. Okay, is this the original Commander Keen? Yes. Or, yeah, and not the, not the, more, the awful fairly mobile game. modern remake. Which yeah. I believe actually doesn't exist anymore. I think that's already gone. It wouldn't surprise me if that was the case. Yes, yeah. yeah. So, I don't know why. I don't know what floated into my head. My brain was like, do you remember playing Commander Keen as a kid? Like, y- yeah, yeah. We, we only ever played the shareware version. I mean, yes, I, I guess so. Cool. Let's think about that a lot. <laughs> so I found it. It was like a pound fifty. It was fine. Yeah. I probably could have downloaded it from somewhere, but that's the joy of making it simple and easy enough. I'm willing to yeah. pay a pound fifty to not have to do that. Yeah, it's it's. I think I remember why I played it more than any other platformer as a kid. Yeah. Firstly, it was on PC. Had yeah. one of those. Had access. Well, I didn't have one of those. I had access to one of those. I mean, that's gonna help. Yeah. It was, the shareware version was a whole chapter of a thing that was completely free. It's like five or six levels, plus a bunch of like in, intermediary places to visit. So, and then there's like a, a whole secret area that you can get to. It's sure, it's, it's, it's fine, I guess. Yeah. I had, I had, I had fun. I, I did a stream of it for like two hours. Didn't quite make it through the chapter. And then almost as soon as the stream was off, I was like, mm, I'm just going to see if I can get through the end of this. Almost immediately beat the last two levels. I was like, ah, the stream attacks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What was it? I was I was fighting a boss in something the other day. And like, I told you I was struggling with it and then defeated yep. it on the very next attempt. <laughs> you did. Sometimes that's how it is. Sometimes you just need to say the thing. And sometimes you're just playing stream attacks. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's... um surprisingly well animated because I didn't remember I remember once playing it in CGA mode Ooh. because that was the only monitor I had access to with those good bi- bisexual colours it's surprisingly well animated it's got that good like sense of gravity and a good jump to it mm. which I think is what makes Mario as as good as Mario yeah, is the, the feel of a jump can make or break a platform yes and also like just the sensitivity of controls regarding like movement yeah and that sense of weight but also being able to just do like a big super powered jump that is effective 
And I think they captured that really well in that game. I also quite enjoyed like some of the weird uh, design choices for, for characters and stuff, for, for the aliens and the robots. Mm. Uh, although the Vorticons can just suck it, because <laughs> apparently you cannot shoot them. You just have to hope that they don't jump as you're jumping to get over them. Because that's kind of random and very bullshit. So, yeah, had fun playing Commander Keen. And, and I'm probably going to play the rest of the chapters soon as well. What about you? What did you play? Um, I've been replaying a few of, like, the sort of roguelike or uh, top-down, top-down, fast-paced combat game about uh, about dodging lots of attacks and, and attacking lots of things. Okay. is a genre that I've, like... Gone back to some of my e- either games that have like do multiple attempts hmm. or just ones I hadn't finished playing. Right. Uh, so I went back to Hades, yes. which I come back and play every now and then. I, I I put like I'll get really into it for a week or two and then put it down. And it's not because I'm not enjoying it, but I'm like no no no, I want to parcel this out and mm-hmm. come back to it every now and then. I finally started playing with a weapon that isn't the Gilgamesh fists, right. which is I'm gonna say about eighty hours of my playtime with that game mm-hmm. has been. This one set of fists that you do punching with, where you get a bunch of dashes, and you can do lots of attacks very quickly, and sort of dash in, do your attacks, dash out, mm. um, which is very like I very much enjoyed by putting poison on my fists, dashing in, inflicting a bunch of poison, and dashing out, so damage mm. over time would happen, and I'd be back out at a safe distance. Yeah. I found that, and that was like the build I liked, and I didn't play anything else, yeah. and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna finally find another build that I like. Yeah. And now you've got a big laser. Yeah. So it's the final unlockable version of the gun, and I forget what it's called, but it's uh, basically it's a laser. And as, as default, it has essentially 20 rounds of ammunition, which is how long the laser can be firing before you have to either reload or just do a dodge and it'll auto reload if you're out of ammo. Um, you can switch that to basically an infinite fire mode with a certain upgrade. Mm -hmm. If you don't have infinite fire and you're having to manage reloading, the benefit is the longer the laser is on and hitting an enemy without, like, breaking that beam, the more damage ramps up. Mm -hmm. The build I've been doing, I've really not cared about that too much, uh, and it's been a worthwhile trade-off to just have infinite fire and not have to think about reloading, Mm -hmm. because what I've been doing is there's an upgrade that makes your uh, your basic attack, which is, in my case, the laser, uh, cause electricity to happen every time something's hit. Mm-hmm. Um, and the electricity damage is like a static number that's separate from your, your beam's damage. Okay. Which, like, happens every single hit. And in theory, that beam being on for however many seconds is 20 back-to-back hits. So you're getting the lightning damage, like, lots of times very quickly, mm-hmm. which balances out. But the lightning also bounces from one enemy to another. Yeah. And then trying to pair it with other things that are, like, really good effects if you're getting lots and lots of attacks in very quickly. Because, in theory, this beam is not one continuous attack. It is lots of attacks in rapid succession. Mm-hmm. So there are things like... Every time you do an attack, fire a little arrow as well. And then I've got like basically streams of arrows going at the same time as the laser. And I've just been bouncing around the room with a big laser that shoots electricity at everything. I don't think I enjoy it as much as the Gilgamesh Fists, but I enjoy it enough. And I'm having a good enough time with it that I'm like, I'm going to stick with this. And it is the first weapon I have felt that way about since those fists. Mm Mm-hmm. In part, I wanted to get used to at least one other weapon because at some point Hades 2 is happening and I'm like, I want to get good with a few different styles of weapons so that when I move over to Hades 2, I'm not just spending the whole game going, this isn't the fists though. Yeah. I, I want to be like, Hades is sometimes about more than that one set of dashing fists. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes it's about flirting with Dusa. Yeah. Um, and the other one I'll, I'll quickly touch on in a similar vein is um, I've been replaying from the start Death's Door, which mm-hmm. is a sort of top-down, isometric, a little bit of a, a, a Dark souls like like uh, but without you, you're not dropping resources upon death, it's a lot less punishing on death, where you play a little crow with a laser sword yeah. going and beating up big, big enemies for souls. The idea is you are essentially like 
off on quests to collect, like, you, you, you've you signed some paperwork and you're going to go get that one big soul, and you can't come back until it's done, and someone steals your kill oh. and tries to use it to open this big door to go after this thing that they were meant to kill and hid behind this big soul door, and they're like, I can't return until I go get my thing, so I stole your kill to try and open this door. Uh, your soul's in that door as well now, so, uh... I guess you I guess you're stuck on this this mission so you have to go and do a bunch of other kills to get enough souls to open this door to go get the thing you were meant to kill in the first place um but you are a sort of dodge rolling attack doing little crow mm. it is a difficult game yes in that you start with only four pieces of health you ta- you get hit four times you're down okay there are, in theory, like um, heart cont- uh, like heart piece equivalents, right? Like quarter heart containers from Zelda games, sort mm-hmm, of thing. Mm-hmm. They are a lot harder to find and a lot harder to come by than they are in Zelda. Oh, you don't get a new full heart container for beating a big area boss. Crimes. Generally speaking, you get hit four times, you d- you're done. So, like boss fights, enemy waves, things like that, you've got to get through the whole thing three hits is the most you can take the fourth will kill you which is tricky but it is it is balanced around the knowledge that like the specific challenge you're trying to take down it's short enough that like you should be able to do it within that sort of tight window Mm. and sometimes you will have to do a, a fight a few times a few times a few times uh checkpointing is usually pretty good about being pretty close to where you are loading times aren't too long you can just sort of keep keep bashing your head against the problem and then go, hooray, I did it. Yeah. That game has a great sense of atmosphere and I very much enjoy its mix of environments that feel very linear in the moment in that sense of you always sort of know where you're meant, like where your progression path mm-hmm. is. But there's a bunch of really nice backtracking opened up where like you'll, you'll unlock something and go, oh, I really, oh, wait, that's a shortcut I can do up there now. That's really neat. And... Yeah little hidden things that are worth exploring to find. This is a neat game, and I, I I, fell off of it just because other stuff I needed to play for work happened at mm. the time. It's been nice to come back to it. Yeah. What about you? What you been playing? We played some on New York Zoo. We did! We played like three games in one day. Yeah, we did. Maybe more. Yeah, maybe? Yeah, three. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yes. Still enjoying it. Still uh, have a enjoying the tile layingness, the selection, puzzling out strategies, but I have noticed one thing. Yeah. Whoever plays in in uh, on board 1 is has always been the winner in our games. I genuinely think that is a coincidence. I think it is I I I don't think it is a I don't think it's a correlation. We haven't had a single game that wasn't that one that won yet. I mean, d- of the the ones that you've been looking for the pattern it no no been... i've thought about every single game well <laughs> i've never played as player 2 and felt like i am at a big disadvantage and i can't see statistically why i didn't feel like i was a big big be. disadvantage i can't see I've, why i've won by like a, a tiny 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 bit well, i've lost rather by like three or four tiles sometimes yeah. sometimes slightly less than that and and it's yeah, it, it does appear to be a thing. Gonna keep keep an eye on that. Gonna keep tracking it. I... Thus far, always that one that wins. But uh, yeah, what else have you played? Oh, I've played a couple of new games on the play day. Mm. Uh, this week's games uh, that I've started playing are Flipper Lifter and uh, e- Echoic Memory. Okay. So Flipper Lifter is a very simple sort of quick acting I guess it'd be like a, a slightly puzzly mini game. Imagine a building that has like three floors, like a hotel or something mm-hmm. and there's little penguins waddling up to an elevator that yeah. runs between these three floors and you're using the crank on the play date to move the elevator up and down okay. the floors and you're basically uh, when if, if you get to a floor and stop moving the elevator, it'll open penguins will get in uh, you will see a little icon on the floors they want to be let out at. And the longer they've been in the elevator, like, it'll be sort of ticking down. So okay. the ones that are closer to the bottom, you have to let them out first. Mm-hmm. 
there is a timer that is constantly going down, but by letting a penguin out on their correct floor, you get a bit of time back. Okay. Uh, so you are trying to quickly and efficiently get penguins to their floor. Efficiently so that you're letting lots of them out and not going back and forth too much. But also making sure that the ones who are like, oh, I need to get off, like, I need to be let out. I've been waiting for ages. Make sure that you're visiting. Yeah, that you're like prioritizing them. dropping those ones off. And then the further you get into a run, it starts adding more and more floors onto the elevator. Yeah. So there are more and more places that ele- uh, that penguins might be lining up to get into an elevator. Mm-hmm. And like, that's a good floor to go to because you'll pick up a bunch at once. You'll pick up uh, some penguins. Yeah. But there will also be more floors for them to be dropped off at. And you'll have to start going faster just by virtue of the fact that you've physically got further to travel to drop mm-hmm, them off. Mm-hmm. So you're having to crank faster and faster to get up and down and up and down. Yeah. Uh, and it's just sort of a, a score chasing thing. And if you get, if you deliver more than X number of penguins to their uh, destinations, you'll unlock new levels. Like uh, the second one, which I unlocked was, Instead of being sort of themed like a hotel, I think it was themed like a mine. Oh, okay. So it's like, oh, you got to go down to the different levels of the mine shaft. Mine. And I think it's just a... Yeah, maybe, maybe there's mechanical differences. I've not played a huge amount of, mm-hmm. of the further levels yet. It seems like it's just aesthetic changes to the same sort of core concept. Mm-hmm. It's a cute little game about elevators and penguins. Yeah. And Echoic Memory is an interesting one that I feel like is going to have more narrative to it um it is a game that doesn't explain its mechanics terribly well but that i am intrigued by Mm -hmm. you are working in some kind of like assembly line at a factory warehouse that is producing the best way i can explain it is like alexa style home assistant voice activated robot things Mm -hmm. And your job is to test that they are functioning properly by doing a little minigame. And that minigame is essentially, you will be played a snippet of music, and you have to find which of the four uh, segments of memory on this robot the snippet of music is is located in. Right. And it starts off very simple. You hear the snippet of music. There are four buttons in front of you. Press press one, you'll hear, hear a tune. Does it match the thing you heard at the start? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's that one. I'll select it. And then it starts ramping up in sort of complexity and things that are uh, forcing you to hold that music in your head for longer. Mm-hmm. The first major one of which, which the game doesn't explain very well, is that you have to use the crank to get these pieces of like these pieces of music you're comparing to to play correctly by like it seems like you're essentially like speeding them up or slowing them down to get them to sound like the sample you originally heard uh like rather than just pressing play and hearing a thing and it's like oh yeah that's the thing i heard Mm -hmm. having to go press play okay okay let's tweak it tweak it okay yeah, yeah that's the one okay um this is all sort of wrapped around with a narrative of you being told not to talk to these robots at any point while they're on the assembly line. Right. I got far enough in that the boss was like, oh yeah, I'm just going to go on break, don't worry, I'll, I'll be back in a minute. And the next one of these robots that comes along on the assembly line is like, will this hurt? Oh. I was like, oh no. Um, so I feel like I'm going to be leading some kind of like... S- robot rebellion. Robot revolution is probably on the cards. Yeah. Um, I I don't know where it's going oh, or no. where those mechanics are going to go. Peril. But it's it's two additional Playdate games that have felt very distinct from the ones I've previously had, both mm-hmm. mechanically and sort of narratively and thematically, that I'm real intrigued by. Yeah. So yeah, two two more interesting little games on the Playdate. Yeah. What about you? What have you played this week? We played some more Brass Birmingham. We did, yeah. It was it was good. I do enjoy that game. Yeah, uh, we um we did we 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 did a bit differently. We realised we'd been scoring incorrectly. I I remembered the I remember <laughs> the scoring thing. We played two, we played we played like two games of this, and as we were finishing the second one, I was like, I've remembered a rule. I'm gonna check the the instruction. Yeah, that rule was that. It was that case, wasn't it? And I was so sure I knew what we were doing. Even I, I even checked through the manual for. Many things, was, but not that. I was proud of remembering how scoring worked yeah. two games in. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, I I love that game. It's it's crunchy. It's 
it's a real brain ringer and um i'm i'm ex always excited to get it out and play more of it it's it's a lovely looking board one day i would like to play on the dark side of the board because it's basically supposed to be like night time and it looks really cool but it is quite difficult to see unless there is like proper overhead lighting and we don't have overhead lighting because uh, someone refuses to fix our light. Someone, I can't imagine who. Can't imagine who. Can't imagine who has has decided not to bother fixing our light for five years. So yeah, that's that's the really enjoy Brass Birmingham. And um, what about you? What have you played? Uh, not much else, like solo. But we did play some more uh, terraforming Mars. We did. Yeah. Fun fact: we played two games. Yep. And the second game, <laughs> we both, you won again, you, you won both games, we were both the same distance apart, and we, on the second game, we scored one less point than we had the day before. Yep, both of us scored one point less than our previous score the other day, the yep. prior day. Yep. It's a weird world sometimes. It, it really is. And, mm. and... yeah, you have, you have really got that game down, uh, and I am, I'm learning. I, I, I played a solo game. And I enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun. I may have miscounted some things. I'm not sure because I'll come to the re full reason why in a minute. But basically, I played through 14 generations, and at the end of that, I had done everything except for one point on one meter. Because basically, in in solo, you have 14 generations, and you have to try and get to a point where you have all of the oxygen. All of the um, heat and all of the oceans out. It's like, cool, that's good to do, but you've got a very, very limited time to do it. And I got everything except one heat sorted. Yeah. Uh, I the, the, the next thing I will lead quickly into is I started playing the digital version because I remembered I got that ages ago as a freebie on the Epic Store. Because yeah. why spend money on the Epic Store? That game is as janky as everyone says it is. Yeah. Sometimes, like, your hand of cards will just vanish, and you'll just have to, like, randomly click on things until they reappear. That's that's not <laughs> ideal. Sometimes it's not obvious where the game, game wants you to click, but it'll keep saying, check the board game state, return. Check the game state, return. It's like, what do you want me to click on so that I can get out of this and go back to playing the game? I've heard that, like, playing online sessions, sometimes it'll just crash and lose your whole progress like no option to reconnect at all mm. so uh, that's less than ideal but I basically only wanted to, to play solo anyway so I don't know what the AI is like I understand it has one but uh, yes yeah, so the reason I say I'm not sure I counted correctly with generations yeah is uh, playing now admittedly I don't have pro prelude because I'm not spending six quid on another copy of prelude that's only <laughs> digital yeah. Uh, and, and probably isn't as good. It's really hard. Yeah. It's extraordinarily hard. Yeah. Like, I the, the first game I played, I think I managed to get, like, a final victory score of about 45. Uh-huh. So that's, that's starting on 14, with 14 generations, because in solo you start on 14 instead of 20. Yeah. And you start with no income whatsoever. Okay, Apart from what yeah. is on your corporation card. Yeah. So you have to, like, you basically need to get money going as soon as possible. And then you have to hope yeah. that you manage to get some kind of engine going before, like, Generation 6 in, in order to get going. My best game so far, I got, like, 65 points. I had all but one of the oceans, uh, almost all of the oxygen, and I was about halfway up the thermal track. But yeah, not clearly not very good. Now we always forget to to monitor generations, so I don't even know how many generations how many we typically game play. Goes. Yeah, we start and then we just completely forget about it. And yeah, that's, that's fine. We we both have ADHD, and that's fine. that's good to know, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, look, the the generation count in two player doesn't actually impact anything about the game to my Not understanding really, no. which is why i've never given it that much thought <laughs> yeah i suppose that's why a couple of things i have noticed from the digital version is there's a couple of rules that we haven't been playing yeah the one from the last few games we played like with other people and, yeah. and with each other 
even if you're playing a formal corporation, you do get 10 cards at the, f- at the beginning. You just have to pay for them. Okay. And the last few games, I think we've taken a corporation and only any cards that the corporation or prelude cards told us to take. Uh, I, I've done that, but that's because you did so previously and told me that's how we do. <laughs> yep. I, I got that wrong. That's my bad. Yeah. The other thing is whenever you put down a city, even yeah. if it's a card, whenever you put down a city, you get credit income increase so if it's because the number of times we've gone yeah. like that's not his city put that oh, down on the spot oh i see what you mean oh so if there's a card that puts down a, a city even though the card doesn't tell you you get the if you the, the, the same income boost as if you'd spent 25 credits yeah oh didn't know that no neither did i that's also, really that's really nice one rule that i completely missed yeah and i don't think i've ever played it even before we lent it to someone for six months and I forgot, apparently forgot a bunch of the rules. Whenever you put anything next to an ocean, including another ocean, you get two mega credits. Oh, I didn't know that either. I didn't know that. We both should have had more money than we had. <laughs> oh, that would have been great for my game the other day where yeah. I had all the oceans. You had such an amazing oh, j- I had, thing going. I had such a great little engine. Yeah. Every <laughs> yeah, it was cheaper for me to the, than usual to make forests. Yep. Every time I made forests, I like got little cubes that were going to eventually get me points. Mm-hmm. Anytime I played a, g- a greenery related card, that also put some animal somewhere that was going to get me points. Anytime I played a microbed, I could put I could get more leaves to make more forests, oh, to get yeah. more nature, to get more herbivores. And this whole little nature is doing thing. amazing. I had a card that prevented you from damaging any of my plants or my yeah, animals. You had the perfect plant engine. Yeah. If only I could have drawn a single card the whole game to increase my plant production, I'd have been unstoppable. Yep. I I mean I had a, a lot of plants going on, but not enough to com- combat anything. <laughs> like even even when I did lay down a whole bunch of of greenery, it just was nothing compared to what you had a already achieved. And, and be what you were capable of. One, it was quite interesting how I think that was the first game, even in like higher play accounts, that I've seen ter- Mars get that green. Like, we've terraformed Mars, we've put all sorts of things on it, but I don't think I've ever seen it quite that green. Which is impressive, because I think we nearly ran out of tiles. Yeah. Oh, I think that's pretty good going, yeah. generally speaking. We did pretty yeah. good. Yeah. Had a good time. Do like playing terraforming Mars. Digital version is a bit janky, uh, but I I hope it will help me make up that thirty or so points between our, between us and <laughs> work out how to play a little bit better. Mm. So yeah, and and the solo challenges is there for that. Uh, what about you? Have you played anything else? Uh, I think that's it for me really this week. Well then, time for this. Uh, hello. Oh yeah. Well, I'm 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 here about the rent. The rent's late. I'm supposed to be paid a week ago. Where's my rent? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Did you not get our letter? No, I don't get any letters from you. You don't send me letters. Oh, well, we sent you a letter about this one, and the the fact you haven't received the letter isn't a defence on your part, but um, we're sorry to tell you we're evicting you as landlord. What? Uh, well, as tenants, we got together and we wrote a letter to inform you that we have evicted you as, uh, as our landlord. Due to your failing to uphold your side of the tenancy agreement. I don't have to uphold anything. Well, you do have a legal agreement, just like we do. And yeah, the legal being... agreement is you give me money, and I, I take that money, and because uh, I work very hard for this. Well, I mean, if you look at the agreement, it says that you'll do a lot of things that you have not been doing. Uh, see, the, the hole in the roof right now. Well, that's just a suggestion. Those things are suge- suggestion. It says here that you're responsible for the drains. Yes, we're not responsible for the hole in the roof. Uh, well, that might be the gutters. You're responsible for the gutters. Have you cleaned the gutters? Look, we are responsible for paying you in exchange for you upholding your end of the bargain. You have not been upholding your end of the bargain. We will not be paying rent. Goodbye. Well, hang on, let's... That's Daphne from 63. What are you doing here? Well, I've also evicted you. We've, we've all got together. We've we formed a little union. And we're going to be, you know, getting together with the rest of the street. In fact, all 97 of your properties have had you evicted. Because we've, quite frankly, had enough of you. Mrs. Matthews from down the road hasn't had gas for over six months now. She's She's very elderly. She shouldn't have to put up with that sort of thing. 
We've been assured it's nothing to do with the gas coming into the property, so that makes it your responsibility. Well, I'm not having this. Um, I'm, I'm going home. Oh, I think you'll find you've been evicted from there, too. Yeah, don't come back. You've been a right nuisance. You haven't heard the last of this? Yeah, we have. Oh. Oh, okay, it's nearly midnight, I think. I think time for bed. I'm going to brush my teeth off. Hello, baby. Hi. Yeah? We're going to head to bed. So I'm going to brush my teethies? Yeah. I'm going to brush my teeth and then I'm going to head up to yeah. bed. Okay, I'll give you a last little fuzz in. Mm. Okay, no, no, baby. Okay, we're going to bed now. Yep, okay. I'm, I'm going okay. to bed. Okay, I'm going up to the bed because it's time for bed. Okay, you can go up there, but I'm, once I brush my teeth, I'm going to have to... Mm. To kick you out. No. You know how you get in the night. No. Yes. No, I'm going to just sleep here like I always do and be behaved. But that's... That's what I do. You've literally never managed that, not even for one night. Mm, I definitely will be well behaved. I will sleep through and not wake you up even at once. Even though your food bowl is going to mm. dispense you food at 6am. Mm, I could probably work out how to open the door. Could you also work out how to close it behind you? Mm, probably. And I wouldn't steal your water. You wouldn't steal my bedside not, water that not, I need? Not even a once. Not even a not once? Not even a once. You wouldn't put your lick your own bum face in it? No. I would sleep and be behaved. Okay, well if you think you can do that, definitely. Mm. Mm, probably. Probably. Pro probably. Getting less and less certain by the second. Mm, what if What if another kitty comes in and is naughty and then leaves and I get blamed? Well, that would be very bad. What you should do then is maybe guard the house and make mm, sure because you're nocturnal. So. I could guard from the bed. You think that would be the safest place? <laughs> yes. And what if I heard a naughty kitty and you know where to be seen? And I turned the light on and it turned out that the kitty that was being naughty was you who wanted to go out and do naughty things outside. That could be good. You're welcome to try. This will be the last time though. I, I see you're just going back to your spot on the sofa. Mm, okay, well, mm. nice try. Pet, you'll pet, be pet, good. Pet. You're very mm. good, just not at night time. No. So, huh. what have you put in your eyes? Uh, we started watching a thing together. We did? Uh, we started watching Amphibia. Yeah. Which is, uh, don't give Disney money. It's an animated, uh, animated show in that sort of, um... Al Housey. Al Housey sort of, sort of, uh, vibe. About... A character out of their own world. Yeah. In a weird, mysterious place full yeah. of frogs. Uh, a, a girl has fallen into another world. This world is full of frogs. Wacky misadventures ensue, but there is sort of the looming threat of a bigger plot sort of on the horizon. Menacing times. Um, I have seen... I, 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 we started watching this because I keep being sort of suggested by TikTok that I might enjoy it by like, Same. hey, do you like cartoons and also you're autistic and queer watch this mm -hmm. um and some of the clips i've seen sure seem to have had some dramatic escalation but where we're at currently it is someone trying to be a better person who's come out of a not great backstory like our main character clearly was i i, I think it's fair to say running with a p group of people who were a bad influence that she was perhaps with because she was desperately lonely and they were the people that made her feel wanted despite not necessarily treating her terribly well yeah because and and the reason i have got that impression so far has been the oh this is how it's supposed to be done which yes. is is very much fits with my autistic there's, understanding of the yes. world there's there's a thing and i think like the second episode where she she says something to the effect of like no, 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 that's what friends do. You you do things that you don't want to do because they want you to do them. Mm -hmm. uh, you give them your things, not because you want to, but because they want them, and that, that's what friends do. Yep. And it's this, like, it really had vibes of, 
I'm autistic and no one wants to be my friend, but these people will be my friend if I do what they say. Yep. And I'm like, oh, all that, all that hits deep. Oh, been there. Um, and like, she's clearly got some not great areas of things she believes while also clearly being at heart a good person. Um, yeah, like, while having some stuff to unlearn. I think she definitely has some things to unlearn because uh, there's been more often than not episodes where we've had the like intro bit, then we've had the setup for what the episode's going to be, and I've gone, ooh. But I mean, all, all of them have generally ended with her sort of going, I have unlearned the thing. Yes. Like, the one that like sticks to mind particularly is the one where she's like, Ah, so some like item has gone missing. Time to be a cop. That's let's let's be a cop. Yes, and... taught her uh, taught her frog friend to be a cop. Yes, and he went. Ex- he basically turned into what all cops are. Yes, and then everyone hated them, and they hurt a a, a, a person who wasn't from around that area. Yes, who who was not uh had not done anything wrong. Yeah, in, yeah. And I think that, like, it does a good job of, like, really selling. Like, oh, oh shit, she really believes this is the right thing to do. Mm. But having a convincing turnaround by the end. Yes. It is well paced. I find the characters pretty endearing. We've had little teases of the larger plot. Um, mm-hmm. uh, she was not the only person to get transported to this world. Yes. Her other friends got transported there and... They're having a very different experience of Frog World, mm-hmm. and I can already see where the conflict is going to happen. Yes, and I'm and not very just the pelicans, <laughs> herons, or whatever. That. I'm intrigued. It is the world building's been interesting in what has so far been like a fast-paced and enjoyable, but not too substantial show. Mm-hmm. But like, I can see enough of the little breadcrumbs being placed that I'm like. I have confidence this is going somewhere. Yeah. I would say it's less endearing than Owl House so far, but mainly because of that, let's kind of be dicks. Oh, wait, I need to learn a lesson about not being a dick. Yeah, like, r- right now, I'm not sold that I'm ultimately going to put this on, say, the same pedestal as Owl House no. or Infinity Train. No. Which, like, that's the bar. Yeah. But I also... Even if I don't think right now it is reaching that kind of bar, it is enjoyable in similar ways and is fulfilling a similar vibe. Yeah, and maybe it will be another one of those things that someone recommended. It's like, oh yeah, it's great once you get out of the first season and a half. Yeah, like I I think back on stuff like Steven Universe is always the big one I think about where I'm like, some or, or like even Adventure Time, it's like sometimes you need to get the ball rolling before that sh- before a show like this becomes the thing it's going to be. Yeah, and like I'm not to say that the first season of either of those shows isn't good, but they're also not what people r- rant and rave about. They're not like True. the bit that people go, "This is what makes the show great." Yeah, I mean, I watched. I remember being very into Adventure Time and just kind of mindlessly watching the first season. And the second season, and then, like, everything else progressively as it came out, which is unusual for me, because I don't usually do that with shows. I'm like, no, wait till the end of the season and and deal with that. Whereas Steven Universe, I watched the whole first season and a half, which was all that was out at the time, and then it was doing one of those annoying freaking hiatuses. Mm. And... Then I watched, like, immediately watched the whole thing straight through again. Yeah. Then I had a very weird experience involving all of that, but I can't talk about it on this show. And, yeah, and that then that became another thing. Where, and whereas I've tried to go back and watch Adventure Time through, I've only managed that once. Only because I was watching it with you. And I did just sit there, going, sit there going, I'm really not sure about the first season of this show. Right, but, like, that's that's the reason with something like Amphibia, I'm willing to go, like... I'm enjoying this enough that I'm I'm going to stick with it oh, yeah. and see whether it's it's going to be one of those. Yeah, I mean it's it's certainly going to be a thing that will kill a whole bunch of time to uh, to watch in the meantime. I am I'm excited to see where it's going because most of the things that have been endlessly recommended to me on TikTok I usually end up loving. So yeah. going to give it some time. If if TikTok 
keeps recommending a thing to me over, let's say, six months, and I keep not engaging with it, and TikTok's, like, still persisting, <laughs> usually that's a good sign for me to be like, okay, fine, I'll watch it. The queer it. autistic algorithm is calling to you. Look, TikTok's been where I've been getting a lot of my, my media Same. recommendations. It's been pretty good. It's where Sever where I got Severance from yeah. was just one of those terrible TikToks where it's like clips from the thing but being narrated over by an autocomplete, oh, yeah. poorly translated voice. By Microsoft that's what, Sam. Yeah, yeah, that's what got me onto Severance. Mm -hmm. It's great. <laughs> yeah, love it. Yeah. And what about you? What have you watched this week? So, I don't remember, know if you remember a conversation we had at about 3am on New Year's. I watched the intro to the movie Big Ass Spider, which oh. is like the first three minutes of that film. It was also the trailer. It, it was set to a piece of music, you would yes, tell us Yes, it is yeah. um, Storm Large's cover of uh, Where Is My Mind by the Pixies. Oh, that is what that was, yeah. I remember watching this trailer, because I think they showed it on like, some TV show in the like morning television program, and we're like, watch the show when it comes out. It's gonna be pretty cool. And I remember watching that, going, "This is amazing." And then buying the DVD and going, "This is shit." Apart from literally the three minutes they showed you at the beginning, <laughs> it is about a giant spider that's attacking the city, and somebody is uh, an exterminator and. This is his biggest job, yo. <laughs> Meanwhile, like, the background is, like, it's that... Because that is such a slow motion version of that track, like this gentle yeah. version of Where Is My Mind, he wakes up or, or, or comes around on the floor being surrounded by people running and screaming and things burning and... It's, it's one of those uh, in media res moments of, this is the beginning of the film. Oh, hang on. We're going to have to go back and talk about where this spider came from. Yeah, it's a beautiful piece of music. For 2013, which was a year with a lot of giant spider movies. <laughs> uh, to two th sorry, 2003, I think it was. Uh, with, with a lot of, of giant animal, of giant spiders. Because I think, is it Arachnopocalypse was the year before? Uh, maybe. It's a genre of films that blends into one in my mind. And Spiders, and Spiders 2, which I think was a, a very similar sort of time. There was a lot of those, hey, CG's got just good enough, we think we can make a passable spider. We're even willing to show it during the daytime. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, it's a beautiful version of that piece of music, and that is the best three minutes of that film, in my opinion. But um, yeah, I'll watch that. What about you? What did you watch? I watched a couple of YouTube videos this you? week uh, that I'll talk about in some vague uh, degree. Ooh. I watched The Man Who Tried to Fake an Element by Bobby Broccoli on YouTube, Okay, uh, which is a little documentary about the history of discovering new elements and the sort of like 1900s, uh, like 100 years or so of working out how to forcibly discover new elements and how that road led to a man faking the discovery of an element and then it being realised that he'd tried to fake several in the past and how that hadn't been detected prior. It is a really interesting summary of like the, the road that starts from accidentally s learning how to split the atom and creating mm -hmm. um, the beginning of, of, of nuclear warfare through to how we today make new elements that exist even if only for a fraction of a second. Mm -hmm. And a man who was good enough at predicting when the teams he was on would reach discovery milestones, that he was willing to bet on that to make himself seem like the centre of those discoveries. A, a fascinating story of a man faking being the first to document things, counting on the fact that people would discover them soon after, and his data would be close enough that they'd assume he found it first. Mathematically, this is likely, so yeah. let's hope it happens. It's really interesting. I also watched uh, How Invincible Crafted the Perfect Plot Twist Villain uh, by Shafarillus Productions. Mm -hmm. uh, this is about the, the animated show Invincible, the um, animated superhero we show. Did you ever watch Invincible? I think we watched Invincible, maybe. Think, yeah, it, it's... Is that the look at what they need a, a fraction... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That Whatever that means. Yes. 
and it is sort of it is a, it's a video kind of about about the villain of that show but more so it is a it is a video about the problem structurally often with plot twist villains in media being that uh, a lot of creators will make the villain a surprise to the viewer in ways that don't really give the time uh, the villain time to be visibly villainous on screen without it being out of nowhere at the last minute suddenly they're a villain so talking a lot about like the way that disney structures a lot of their plot twist villains which is mm. At the 11th hour, suddenly, aha, I whip off the mask, I am evil, haha. And about how Invincible kind of has its cake and eats it too, in that it paces its plot twist reveal at the end of its first episode, so that like there is that moment of shocking and surprising the audience, but then it keeps the plot twist secret from the characters until the like the the eleventh hour. Dramatic irony. Yeah. So that you get to have that that surprise impact on the viewer, but you do it early enough that the viewer then gets to see the like, oh goodness, we know all of the sinisterness behind what is happening. Mm -hmm. We get to watch no one else picking up on it and how that escalates. Yes. It's it's an people interacting with that villain. Yeah. And and Get, maybe putting yeah. themselves in more danger than they know. Getting to see the clues that we understand are clues because we know we've seen the actions behind them, but that don't seem like clues to people who haven't seen what we've seen. Yes. Um, it Very is... much the look behind you. Yeah. Uh, what about you? What do you watch this week? Uh, we watched two new ad- uh, or two more Oxventure episodes. Uh, we watched Snow Way, which uh, Luke did mm-hmm. the uh, DMing for. Uh, which was just a, a fun and very silly little adventure. And the other one was Night Shift, which was really endearing. Yeah. That was the one about the uh, the knight who didn't show up to the dungeon he'd been going to for 30 years. Yeah. And and the monsters of the dungeon being like, can you can you help us find the knight that runs our dungeon? He's <laughs> like, he's okay. The rules are, uh, if you, if you, if you, Lose if you get get down to one health, you raise your hand and the, and and they'll escort you gently out. <laughs> uh, you can keep any treasure you find, no king shaming. Yeah, no king right shaming. Yeah, no <laughs> king shaming in the dungeon, and I think that's that's very reasonable. It is a weirdly sweet story, a uh, in just with a a very unusual premise, and, yeah. and I really enjoyed that. I, I really enjoy that. Everyone, like, committed very fully to the very silly premise and, mm-hmm. like, sold it really emotionally. It was yes. a lovely story. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also watched... He thought they... he thought he had friends. They were paid actors on the T1J channel on uh-huh. YouTube. Which is a breakdown of a... Let me see if I can find the name. Uh, the Joe Schmo Show. Right. Which was uh, one of those like mid two thousands reality TV shows where uh, allegedly all these people are gonna go and live in this big mansion and it'll be like the lap of luxury, and every week people are gonna get voted out. The thing is, only one of those people was a real person. Everybody else was a paid actor. Huh. And how they had to change their plans for the show based on the reactions of the main character of this. So basically, he's kind of goofy. He sticks in his foot in it a few times. Mm. But ultimately, he seems to be all right. Yeah. Like, uh, there's there's a, a thing where, I because it was early 2000s, one of the challenges was uh, we've... We've got a a, 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 a a woman here. You're going to have to put your hand on her boob and whoever lets go last wins Ugh. wins the challenge. And he was just like, I'm just going to deliberately lose it because I'm oh. not super comfortable with this. Okay. And so basically he started to form this uh, relationship, like this friendship with uh, one of the um, people in the house with him. Right. And then they were like, the producers were like, haha, we're just going to fuck with this guy. We're going to have everyone vote that person out. Oh, no. So it will appear that that person voted. And basically he just starts crying. And like he has a very emotional reaction to this. And all of the actors were just like, D- I'm not okay with this. Yeah. And the audience were apparently not kind of okay with this. So they pivoted the show 
from how can we hum- basically humiliate this guy and, and, and Truman show him to how can we make him look as good as possible? Oh. Kind of. <laughs> Uh-huh. And they put him in all these weird situations still, but it was very much just sort of like, hey, he's actually kind of sweet and, and kind of nice. And even when they did little bits of like, oh, this person's trying to be a bit underha- un- underhanded and, and, and forming alliances, even though that person's been kind of mean throughout the rest of the show, like that sort of stuff not really paying off. And then at the end, just going, surprise, we're all actors. Uh huh. Apparently, they tried to do two more seasons of this show, and it just did not work because I, I can't fucking imagine the, why. The analysis is, of this is really interesting from the point because I'd never even heard of this, and I just I don't even know if it was on UK TV, but just the whole sort of like the show was not what the producers thought it was going to be, not what they intended it to be, and they really had to pivot hard to make that work. Yeah. And talking about how compared to something like Big Brother or Love Island or a lot of those things, it's like, who is going to be the weirdest people? Who are going to be the um, most messy people, the most drama people? Who's going to get the most out of Mm. our show? Who is super attractive as well? You get a lot of that with these, especially on the American ones. And this was kind of a, this is just a guy just sort of a fairly average guy who's who isn't in in any way particularly special and because they didn't hire him in the same way as as they usually hire for these shows it just didn't didn't wasn't what they were expecting it was going to be and they didn't apparently feel as good doing doing the things they thought they were going to ha ha do the thing and yeah, it's it's like a 17 minute video and T1J does a, a, a great job summarizing and breaking it down this sounds weirdly fascinating. Yeah, I, I, I'm glad I watched that rather than trying to watch the series. But um, yeah, yeah, that that was kind of a fascinating show. It it feels like it's one of those viewing experiences that's probably better uh, as a summary than an actual piece of media. In the uh, the one that I always think of in that regard is Kid Nation. Don't know it. Oh, it, it is a um, it is a two thousands uh, reality show. We're a bunch of children, and we're talking, like, most of whom are, like, under the age of 13. Right. With basically zero uh, supervision, were left to fend for themselves in an Old West, uh, an abandoned Old West town. Right. I think you've talked about this a couple of times. And they have to do, like, challenges to earn, you know, they'll do challenges and the winning team gets to pick, you know, do you get uh, an additional pump for being able to pump water or a water slide, and you've got like children having to turn down the fun thing that would be nice for in them order to survive. in order to get like yeah one one of the it's like do you want hot uh, do you want some like hot takeaway pizzas do you want that or do you want like basic food staples that will help keep you alive longer more d- dependably okay like lots and lots of that sort of thing hey kids and, like, learn to survive it's it's a fucking reality. It's, it's a fucking nightmare of a show. Yeah, um, that sounds it. That you've got like, it it gets to the point where like there's a child at one point that starts drinking bleach that has to be uh-huh. intervened on. Some of the kids go fucking like tribal warfare. I can imagine. It's, it it is. I've not, heard about Lord of the Fl- yeah, Flies. It, so it is the expect. closest we have to a real world Lord of the Flies, and I don't know how the fuck that show exists. But it's one that, like, I wouldn't recommend watching the actual show. Just watch people doing interesting summaries of it. Yeah, because there are moments from that. That's like, dramatic. I, yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to watch all this in real time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, have you watched anything else? Uh, not really. Yeah, what about you? Nope, that's it for me. Well then, it's time for this. We've got a new sponsor. Who's our new sponsor? Well, do you like tabletop role playing games? I do, as a matter of fact. Do you already have multiple sets of seven polyhedral dice? Yeah, I do. Do you have like the 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 D four and the, the yeah the, the D D six yeah the, the D ten the D twelve the D eight twelve D eight yeah I got all of them D twenty D one hundred yep D two it's just a coin it is just a coin yeah. yep. You, you you like you've got got loads of those already. Yeah, you got some ideas about sort of fantasy realms that you like wandering yep. around in. Yep, yep, I've got yep. a lot of stuff that works in that that whole yep. space. And and you 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 want something that you can keep playing for years and and, and it'll 
continue and grow with you and maybe you can teach your kids and at no point is anyone going to try and take that away from you for no reason other than greed? Yeah? Try Dragons and Dungeons! Oh. It's a totally unique tabletop role-playing game system where you explore the unremembered lands. Oh! Yes. There's dragons yeah and and dungeons and and also like all sorts of different creatures yeah from folk tales yeah and, and some from famous fantasy stories that yeah. have been changed just oh. enough that they're not actually actually yeah. the the thing there, there's that small wing a small sort of humanoid creature with the little wings yes and there's the sort of like a uh, half demonic half sort of humany one yeah and the the short the short angry one that does the mining Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I recognise these yeah. archetypes. And the, are... the short one with the goggles that does all the, the artificing. Yeah. 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 All oh, of the those artifacting. Yes. Art- artifacting is different. Yes. I don't know why I said the other thing. Yeah. I don't know why I could possibly have been thinking that. No, no, no. That That's a different, legally distinct game. Dragons and Dungeons is a completely unique Pay what you want. Available on each day or .io. Released under the Creative Commons Zero license. So technically, it's public domain. Yeah. Anyone can go and get it. Anyone can have their own thing. Anyone can create it. And it says right there, way at the top of the the list, this set of uh, of guidelines, this uh, rule set under which that we we allow everyone to create content using this. Uh, and to, to create ad- adventures and, and spin-offs of their own belongs entirely to them forever and this can never be rescinded under any possible rules or guidance. Yeah. So there. And at the bottom it just says, fuck Hasbro. Oh, fun that. Yeah. Inside the boardroom of Supremacy Software. Hi. Hi. So, we got a problem. Again? I know, I know, I know. Every well, week. I mean, look, maybe it's not such a problem. We gotta tuck this out. So, uh... Right. I've been seeing some, uh... I've been seeing some news stories, and they're about us, and we should probably, uh... Have a, have at least a conversation about this. Right. So, uh... You re- you know, a little while ago, we released a game game development sim. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that game about a fictional game development studio and you make yeah. your own, like, little video games. Yeah, and, and we used all the data we harvested from that to come up with new game ideas. Exactly, exactly. But, uh, apparently, and I haven't played the game, I, I don't play any of these things. It's right. an absolute yeah, waste yeah, of yeah. time when you could be doing capitalism. But, right. uh, apparently, some of the dev team have at some point been sneaking some kind of anti-crunch pro-union messaging in like oh no um the your fictional developers are being overworked and underpaid and that's making the game worse oh oh you got a power up for agreeing to a union i don't like this no how do we how, how, how do we let this happen well i mean we pay zero attention to what the dev team's doing and that's probably a problem don't i don't the, what the hell do we pay their middle middle managers for I I mean I mean look that would require them to read what what the what the lower folks are putting in the game and I I can't say I blame them for not wanting to read video game text. Though. I mean I get it, but isn't that what we pay them for? Maybe we need like a lower middle manager that can read it and you know pass it on to the upper managers. I mean that sounds like money. I mean look maybe what what we if do- we had like those supervisor roles that you get in like fast food. Like they're not really a manager. They ha- are expected to like to do a whole more load more duties. We'll just get you know some of those programming guys, uh, yeah. the ones the ones who act like they're everyone's boss anyway. We'll get them. We'll say here's you know five cents a week more, and now you're a supervisor, and, right. and you have to stop all that. Well, here's here's my uh, my proposed solution to this problem. Right. Um. I think we we march we we I was gonna say we march down there. We get someone to march down there. Yeah. For we. Us. You know. Yeah. Uh. And and demand we get a new update. And the uh the 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 uh the update is gonna tw- you know I'm not saying we take out the union messaging or the uh the crunch talk. 
I think we just add some extra context. So like, right. so you they, know, they form the union and then uh, the they, union they steals all their money. The union steals their money and or then, negotiates but, worse yeah. deals for them. Yeah. Or uh, the, they're finding that the few people who didn't join the union are actually getting way better uh, treatment yeah. because, you know, they had the decency to talk one-on-one -on -one yeah. with, with those in power or, uh, you know we 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 uh we take the bit about crunch and it's like oh uh oh, we did more crunch and the review scores got worse but the profit went up and then that meant that more money could be invested and the next game's profits actually were were much better and the maybe crunch in the long term yeah. is more money for the company and that means the company actually will make better games yeah, exactly. We're just like, hey, look, Crunch, it's, you know, you, you're going to say it's bad, but like long term, it's going to be great. So, yeah, like, they just don't understand the economy. Yeah, they don't understand that long term we make more money. Yeah, we make more money. Because I mean, then... they're playing as the people controlling the studio. So yeah. like, surely they'll understand more money equals good. Yeah, I'm always happy when I have more money. Exactly. You are a fucking genius. I know. So, what have you put in your ears? I uh, put new, a uh, couple of new bits of music in you? my ears. Um, I listened to a track called Cast No Shadow by mm -hmm. Shadow Academy. Hang on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, I had the same moment. So this came up on my, like, weekly music recommended, and I was listening to it, and I was like, this vocalist sounds really familiar. Is that is that Dan Avedon? Dan from Ninja Sex Party, Half oh. of Game Grumps? Yes. It seems like this is a side project that he created with someone during lockdown out of a desire to be making music that wasn't silly, goofy music about ninjas in space or whatever. Okay. It's very, like, very theatrical, grand rock music. Very sort of anthemic, very swelling sounds. Lyrically inspired by books that Dan happened to be reading at the time during lockdown. So it's a lot of loosely inspired by not directly like not one-to-one -one directly about but sort of about the stories that he was reading in a lot of books when stuck inside for a year mm -hmm. there was a track called white whale which is one of the easy ones to recognize the inspiration from being about mm -hmm. moby dick it's got a really interesting grand like grand adventurous sound in a lot of just very fun tracks about like larger than life fantasy creatures mm. um it's, it's got the feel of like you know when you've got metal that sometimes like that skews into like doing grand songs about dragons like power uh, metal yeah pa that sort of like medieval slightly medieval f uh, power metal yeah kind of telling yeah. a story of like blind it's, guardian type stuff yeah it's it's that if it had a little bit more musical influence of having grown up on like 80s movie in movies like the last unicorn like a little oh, bit yeah. of that sort of like 80s animated fantasy music sound in with a little bit of power metal inspiration. Okay. It's got a really nice feel to it. it I really enjoy Ooh. that. I also listened to a track called Everything Went Numb by Streetlight Manifesto. That doesn't sound good. I hope they're okay. <laughs> I hope so too. The best way I can describe the sound of this track is that it sounds like a mix between ska and crust punk. Like... If Scar was sung by a man who'd smoked a few hundred cigarettes every day and then chugged a Red Bull, okay. like very, very fast and very gravelly voiced Scar. Right. <laughs> this track is about someone in a desperate situation turning to joining joining a heist, uh, presumably like a bank robbery, it sounds like, that goes south very quickly. Uh, it is a very fast, chaotic track as this man tries to talk himself into like, just just follow the plan. It will go fine. You know, it, it'll fix all your problems. Just just don't think about it. Go numb. Just just go do the job. It'll be fine. Oh no, everything's gone wrong very quickly. Chaos. The track uses really smart use of abruptly cutting to near silence strategically to give moments of respite in the chaos. Mm -hmm. A little bit like being momentarily in the eye of a storm. It uses that effect very effectively for a song about oh god everything's gone wrong all of a sudden panic hmm. it's a three and a half minute song but it feels a lot bigger and more epic than that length would suggest and i don't mean to say it feels long but that it wedges more into three and a half minutes than i would think you could wedge into that hmm. it's got the feel that like a five minute prog rock track would have right in a couple fewer minutes impressive it does a lot with the minimal amount of time. Mm -hmm. I also listened to a track called Jane Doe by mm -hmm. Hail the Sun. 
Uh, me. I'm Jane Doe. I, I hope you're not a Jane Doe. No, I'm Jane Doe. <laughs> you are Jane Doe, but I hope you're not a Jane Doe. Not today. <laughs> it is a very ethereal and ghostly track with some like nice use of very precisely plucked guitar to contrast that sort of ethereal sound it has mm. uh, it's got really nice echoing uh it's got really nice layering of different sounds to create a big soundscape lots of things like use of wind sounds rain effects uh layered on top of a uh, music that is very ethereal and very sort of echoey lyrics uh, and vocals to create something that feels very large as a sound very very good like soundscaping and the last one i listened to was a track called take me by the hand and lead me through this disaster by pat the bunny oh the little bunny gets pat 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 the bunny um it is a song about the frustrating reality of trying to stand up to systems of oppression which will fight tooth and nail to not give you any power but once that progress that you've been fighting for happens you know, it, it and, and it's now, you know, expected as a right, they'll try and rewrite history and pretend that they always supported your cause and were definitely not the ones that you were having to fight to get those rights in the first well, place. Slowly trying to erode those rights again. Yep. Um, I, I have a little bit of lyric lyric here that, like, was what got me intrigued by the track. Malcolm X never lived to see the government f- fall, but the state he opposed made him a stamp. Maybe that's the best you can hope for if you never give up. Your enemies will teach your corpse to dance. Wow. Yeah, it's a heck of a track. There is some fascinating, fascinating writing in there. Mm. It is a track that like tries to acknowledge the reality of the reality of what your oppressors will try and do during and after your fight for for, for rights. But also, it is a track about not letting that reality wear down the fight in you. Mm-hmm. It is acknowledge that this is their playbook acknowledge that everything is fucked feel that experience it and don't like pretend it's not happening but then get angry about it and keep fighting Mm. it is a really well written track i am very i really enjoy it Mm -hmm. what about you what have you listened to this week uh not a huge amount lots of random ambienty bits uh so we listened to brass birmingham ambience musique l'ambiance on the board games musical channel on youtube which was just a nice playlist ava- that is also available on Spotify that's just just a bunch of just nice tunes to listen to while playing Brass Birmingham. And I think it sat quite well. There's some, yeah. some clever Kevin MacLeod I noticed in there. Um, yeah, it was, it was a nice little mix and it, it did us for the full game. So well done to them. Uh, listen to cm a wonderful four hour chill out chill step mix by mixer hq 2016 on the mellow vibes channel mm-hmm. which was four hours of chill step that we listened to while playing terraforming mars <laughs> uh it was just yeah just nice to have one in the background very chill because i think was it after that we ended up doing a bunch of writing stuff oh that was last week yeah time is a flat circle time is a flat circle absolutely lost in yeah lots of just Nice background ambient stuff, no lyrics, lots of chilled things to have on in the background yeah. while while getting on with stuff. And I made some more music. You did. I've listened to this a bunch. I did the whole thing. It, this so this is called with respect. You can find it on my bedroom programmer channel uh, on SoundCloud. And it's a bit more a bit more lo-fi beats to sip soup to. Yeah. It, uh, just I I was I just felt the need for a little bit of lo-fi it it had a beautiful melancholy vibe to it yeah i I think the fact that it's been pissing with rain for weeks yeah and also like it's been really like i've had to have the day lamp on all day some days because even with the curtains open it's so freaking dark it's not it's not a track i could picture you writing in summer Probably not. <laughs> no, but yeah, I tried some new things with that, with, with some new techniques for actually getting interesting and long melodies down, because mm. I still don't mu- make music necessarily in the way that my music theory lessons would have taught me, but I, I do enjoy it, and I do enjoy the sort of more complex stuff, while also trying to keep it relatively simple. Yeah. And I picked up a... A nice bundle of instruments 
about two months ago that I haven't really had a, a proper chance to fiddle around with beyond just, yes, I have listened to these sounds. Like, it did do the sensible thing and spend a day just going through a bunch of them and going, yep, I, I like that those sounds and those things that I can do with this thing. Yeah. Uh, one of these is the uh, Native Instruments electric mint melody guitar mm. which is a session guitar instrument so there's like a bunch of pre-programmed -pro like strumming patterns mm. and patterns within a like within a particular key that it can play or you can play individual notes either plucked muted fle fledge i don't know flegio or something like that yeah and I can't remember what the last option is, but like basically a bunch of different ways you can play piano uh, guitar strings. Yeah. So yeah, it was fun to to try and work around in that. I couldn't find any like strum patterns I liked, but I remembered a technique that someone had done in FL Studio ages ago in a, in a lesson mm. I was learning about how to make really elaborate um, piano lines. Okay. By basically just going, I will draw like four bars. Of all of the notes I want, and then I'll use the cut tool to go diagonally up and then diagonally down, and then do the same underneath it, so that basically you end up with just like individual notes, and then you just take out all the long bits. Mm -hmm. I didn't take out the long bits, I just cut sort of diagonally up, and like, that's a strum up, that's a strum down. Yeah. And just worked out like techniques for that, and then changing the velocity to make it sound like a strum string and it came out quite nicely considering i don't play guitar i wouldn't have known that's how you did that yeah i, I think there are a, a ways i would do it differently in future that would probably make it a little bit easier and maybe sound a bit more natural yeah. but yeah I'm, I'm really happy with the result and guitar's one thing i really wanted to get into my tracks for a while yeah and the problem with a, not being able to play it. Like, I tried to learn guitar, and there are just bar chords that I cannot make. Yeah. Making my hand do the thing? No. Like, I, I could do D and D7 and C, and I think G, and that was about it. And pretty much everything else I really, really struggled with. Yeah. And I, you know, I went back to it so many times, and there are just, just chords that my wonky hands do not do. Yeah, that is that is me. And the and the other thing with guitar is you can buy so, like sample packs with like here's a bunch of guitar melodies, but obviously you're going to have to do stuff with that. Otherwise, you're just going to get copyright struck, or you just or you're going to get flagged as yeah, we 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 understand that you've used the same royalty free piece of music as somebody else as a sample, but we can't make any of that like paid content because of that. Soz, not soz. So yeah, I've 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 always been a bit wary of that. And or you'll find a melody that doesn't. I couldn't work out ways to make it continue in a yeah. natural way using just the samples I had. So it was nice to just go. Here is a thing that I can kind of play, and it sounds natural enough because I've previously used free VST. I used to use I think it's um DSP guitar, which mm -hmm. is a really lovely free instrument. And I have messed about with various cabinet effects over the top and distortion effects to make it sound more natural. Because yeah. by the time you mask it under in enough distortion and compression, yeah. you can make it sound pretty good. But this was the first time it's been like, this is a thing that is specifically designed for it. So it was, it was yeah. nice to give that a go. And yeah, I enjoyed making that piece. It was the first piece I've made in a really long time where I took it off of my PC... Uploaded it to my Google Drive, yeah. downloaded it to my phone, played it through my phone on a mono speaker, and was like, that still sounds good. And then I took it out and listened to it on two different pairs of headphones, and went, that still sounds good. Yay! Because usually what I do is I get very excited about, I've finished the thing, and I'll export it, and I'll either put it on my phone, and it will sound like shit garbage, even though I've mastered it really sensibly. Yeah. Or I'll put it on headphones, and all of a sudden I'll hear something I absolutely fucking hate about it. Yeah. And I didn't have any of that. It was really nice. So I'm I'm glad that I managed to get one out. First, like, long track since, I think, what, November? I put out mm. the Halloween stuff, like, during October, November. So it was nice to go back in, do a thing, and feel quite accomplished with it. I'm glad. It was, it was nice to do that. And, and definitely having the new keyboard helped. Yeah. Thank you. I'm glad you like. I do. It's good. Yeah. Uh, what about you? Have you done anything 
to listen to anything else? Ah, uh, no, that's it for me, really, to listen to. Well, then, that's, <gasps> that's, that's everything for me. Well, then time for this. All right. Well, 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 if it isn't Ronda the Razor, Dan or Gaff. That, that it is, that it is. And uh, what brings you to our part of town? Well, uh, I want to join uh, the Stabby Boys. Ronda the Razor? The yeah. fastest blade in South London wants to join the Stabby Boys. Yeah. Oh no 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 no. We can't. We can't be having that. We can't be having that. That just wouldn't be appropriate now, would it? No. No. Now, if you was going to join us, we'd have to be the Stabby folk, the Stabby people, the Stabby gang. Yeah. Okay. All right, lads. Well, we we we're gonna have a bit of a change of of branding. No longer the Stabby Boys. Aww. We're gonna be the Stabby Gang. Ronda the Razor here is joining us. I mean, it is 2023, current year argument and all that. And, uh, you know, maybe it is about time that we, we drop the needless gendering of, uh, of, of the name of our gang. Uh, well, actually, uh, I wanted to come out as non-binary. Oh, oh, all right. Uh, well, uh, have you... Have, Changing your name at all? Or are you going for any particular pronouns that you know? Um, they, they them. They them. Right. Oh, uh, and still, still happy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So still happy with Reg. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, should Reg? Okay, everyone. Well, if you get any trouble, Reg, I'll have a word. Oh, I know, I know. But we're a tight knit family here in the stabbing gang. Now, uh, is, is anyone else got anything to say while well, while we're having this? You know, it's, it's I'm I'm glad that we're all being quite open at the moment. You know, uh, I was I was gonna come out as a trans woman. Oh, uh, well, uh, well you, uh, you uh, what pronouns you going with? Oh, she, her. Oh, she, her. Right, and, and you have you changed you changed the name uh, at all? I'm gonna go with uh, Sophie. Sophie. Oh, that's that's lovely. That lovely, mm. lovely. Oh, I think my uh, yeah, my cousin's called Sophie. I I had noticed, you know, the the chest getting a bit fuller there, there, Sophie. But uh, are you alright with Soph? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, I noticed the chest getting a bit fuller, but I assume you know you it, it was either something that was none of our business or something that you were going to tell us about when, when when the time came along. So you know, I'm I'm glad the Stabby Gang is is all one big happy family. Where well are everybody? Way, let's go and have a cup of tea, then do some stabbing. Yeah, stab, 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 stab. Hello, welcome to Banquet of Nature. Just a table for one. Oh yeah, yeah, just just for one, just for one. Okay. Well, hey, vlog squad. Uh, I'm here at bank. Was it banquet of veggies? Bank banquet of nature. Banquet yes. of nature. Oh, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna be giving my my thoughts on all of their uh, vegan dishes. Yeah. Okay, well, we we see. You, were were you oh, happy with you. the booth? Oh yeah, yeah, that'll do. Okay. Well, uh, if, would, would you like a menu? Oh no no! I don't need to see a menu. Um, uh, I'll order the uh the twigs and grass, Ramira. Yeah, the twigs and twigs and grass. You know that's what that's what you sell in it. Twigs and grass. The, the twigs and grass. Yeah yeah. <laughs> okay yeah. Um, would you like a drink or anything with that? Oh, uh, beer probably. Did yeah. you have do you have vegans have that? We we do have beer. Is there yeah. just twig juice? Would you prefer a twig juice? Oh, if that's what you do, oh, I'll have a twig a twig juice or. Okay, we'll be right uh, back with your order. Uh, oh, this is oh, it's gonna be oh, it's gonna be it's gonna be so terrible, isn't it? Oh, I can't okay. can't, can't wait to see what sort of nonsense they feed me. There, it's not gonna be anything like me, is it? Here's your salad of uh, grass a la twigs uh, and oh. a fresh pint of twig juice. Oh, oh. I mean, I didn't like mean it lit lit literally. That's what you said you wanted. Um. Oh, excuse me, I've just got to take somebody else's order. Oh, oh, that that looks real nice. What's that? Is that fr fried chicken? It's a plant-based chicken, yes. It, it is fried like a, a, a southern fried chicken burger, yes. You'll see it's on a nice burger there. Lots of that delicious lettuce and that nice like real, That looks like a real nice cocktail. Many alcohols don't contain any animal-based ingredients. I mean, you do have to be careful about a lot of the wine, but, but generally spirits are just, let just me, fine. Let me, let me just shut the phone off for a second. Um... Yeah, can I get one? Can I get that? That actually looks a lot better. Okay, um, I'm just, I'm just gonna. Sorry, chicken burger. Did you want the, the curly fries and the? Yeah, that actually looks really good. Yeah, and and an actual cocktail. And... Yeah. Cool. Shall I just get rid of the uh, the twats menu there for you? Mm, yeah. Yeah, I I thought so. Yeah. Okay. Don't feel like you have to stop your video. You can just no, no, it's tell okay. them what no, a nice it's okay. time you're having in here. No, it's okay. I want to see more of. What do you want to see more 
Oh, Brochure Justice Warriors. Brochure Justice Warriors? Yeah. All right, Larry. All right, Barry. How are you doing? Yeah, not bad, mate. You, you been up so much? Uh, I've just been, uh, you know, getting frustrated at corporations being corporations. Yeah, they, yeah. they do be corping. Yeah, yeah, I've been uh, watching all this stuff going on with uh, Asbro and the uh, Dungeons and Dragons community. Oh, yes. and what's, uh, he, what's he real hard this year? Yeah, yeah. It and, wasn't, uh, you know, all the, uh, the oh, I suppose I say this year, within the last 12 months, we've obviously seen... Uh, a lot of awful stuff with Magic the Gathering, so yeah. Uh, yeah, here we are with the uh, D&D now. Yeah, well, I mean, on top of that, I've been watching uh, a lot of uh, stuff that like, I think his corporation's been disingenuous. I've been watching um, uh, uh, Xbox is trying to buy uh, is trying to buy uh, Activision Blizzard at the moment. Yeah, and because they only want King. Yeah, well, yeah, definitely. They need definitely. that Candy Crush money. Yeah, but they've they've been like. I've been real dubious of them recently because they've been making a real effort to see pro union. Yeah, and like, I mean, I was like, it, yes. on the surface of it, it seems, see it, seems but... great. Yeah, like uh, Zenimax wanted to unionize, and they were like, yeah, 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 you can unionize. We won't union buffs. We will even run pro union adverts. But I've got this little little voice yeah, in the head that's can't like, help, can't help it. Yeah, yeah, you've you've got the FTC breathing down your neck because you're trying to trying to form a monopoly yeah. right now. And one of the big uh, concerns is what if you get the you know, Activision Blizzard's got a bunch of staff trying to unionize. If yeah. you try and make yourself look pro union without legally obligating yourself to do that in future. Yeah. Maybe they'll let you buy, 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 you know, that studio to help the unionising workers. Yeah. Ha uh, ha ha, we take it all back. And like, yeah. maybe... I mean, we, we've been burnt too many times by capitalism, really, isn't it? You know, yeah. so it's understandable that we're, we're dubious when... Uh, when the wolf's like, no, no, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy for the sheep to be uh, free range, as free as they want to be, you know, and if the, if the sheep want to get together and... and Build themselves a you know a, a nice little sheep place for them. I I the big bad wolf am very happy for them to do so, and I support their cause to do so as long as I can, you know maybe go over there and buy that four point six billion sheep. Yeah, yeah, and it's like I, I I've seen some people being like, oh you're being you're being you know uh, overly cautious, but like the thing I I I want to say to people is like. Corporations are never your friend. No. They are never doing things for, like, you know, the right reasons. Like, always be dubious of corporations. Because at the end of the day, any corporation that reaches a certain size and scale exists to extract wealth yeah. for, a, for a small number. Like, unless we're talking, like, a proper worker cooperative where every single member of the business gets paid exactly the same as everyone, you know, regardless of level in the company... What you have is, you know, with any shareholder driven uh, corporation, yeah. Yeah. is the quest for infinite exponential growth in wealth. And that will lead to uh, lying to people's faces to seem more pro worker than they are, to, to be able to consolidate more wealth. It comes in the form of. To inflate their uh, own stock prices exactly. and then, you know, extract that. It comes in the form of uh, encouraging people to uh, make content about your product, like D&D, and go like, aha, that's free advertising. Now we've had enough free advertising. Fuck you all. None of you can make the stuff anymore because we don't need you anymore. Yeah. Corporations are not your friend. They will let you do things as long as it is beneficial to them. And the second it stops being beneficial, they will take it all away and laugh off with the profits. I think even when it continues to be, uh, you know, profitable to, for them, there, are, there, there is a, a level of greed that says, like, hey, we're not making all of the money. Yeah. We're, well, we're only making some of the well, money. Well, that's, that's it. It's uh, why well, make some of the money when you can make all of the money. And, yeah. you know, this is why rather than have, you know, in, in the case of uh, what's the Wizards of the Coast, you could have a sustainable business model, but what if we gambled that for maybe even more money? Yeah, you know, uh, they they just they they'll keep going back and trying to get more and more and more out of out of the people, and it it feels weird that they're still trying to do this at uh, at a time of financial crisis for for a lot of people, and and you know, real struggling in, in many places around the world. Or, you know, on top of all the other issues we've got going on at the moment, and 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 just to be so constantly greedy and demanding and, and trying to just just suck everything out of people, and it's it's not only disgusting, it's just just deeply concerning. It short sighted as well, like yeah. if if you've got the ability to just have sustainable ongoing 
money. Yeah. Like, why is that not good enough? Yeah. Like, you, you, you could be doing loads of, uh, of good and better, and you could still be making enough money for the rest of your lives. Yeah. You know, that you are still kept in, in, in relative comfort. But they don't want relative comfort. They want absolute obscene luxury and also just some, the, some some just some some high score chasing on their bank balance they, they really want, they want the power that comes from the divide between the haves and the have nots yeah. and that can only exist when you have such infinitely you know the more you can grow that gap the more impossible it is for people to stand against you yeah it's it's absolutely disgusting and you know i i, I really hope that we do see an end to capitalism soon you know we is it, we are in a very concerning situation right now, and I, I hope that we that, that we are starting to see more people yeah. in this pro union movement. You know, more people joining that, more people you know willing to step up for their rights and, and realise that uh, certainly in the UK, what we're experiencing is neo feudalism. We we're not really dealing with capitalism anymore, and yeah. and what the the feudal lords need to remember is that the the reason we get weekends and and equal pay and things is because we agreed as workers we would get fair pay and not come to their houses and remove their heads i mean you know sounding better and better every day to be honest i'm constantly surprised that something hasn't already happened but you know i'm i'm also constantly disappointed by the people of of this country to, you know, even when a, a movement starts to not fully get behind it and then, then you know, keep keep that momentum going. Because uh, it just seems like everything fizzles to a halt as soon as the the Daily Mail puts out another another slightly depressing story or you find the headlines, you know, completely covered in, in you know, royal nonsense coming yeah. out. And it, it, it all feels very much staged to avoid talking about, you know, the real issues like, you know, the, the issues with the NHS and, and everything else and, and the number of people using food banks and the, the electrical yeah. issues and everything else, you know, it's, it's deeply concerning times. And yet we're, we're struggling to get any kind of, you know, socialist movement together, you know, and, and yet... Yeah, we are here at a time when more people need help. More people yeah. are expected to, you know, use cold banks or food banks. And I, I hope that the people gathered around in those situations are starting to talk to each other and going, hey, this isn't right. You know, maybe there, yeah. there could be something better. And as as that is my only hope that can really come out of something like a cold bank you know there's all these people who are going to go well hopefully form a little community around there there that need to be warm and that that situation that they've been put in by this government and go what if not this yeah <sighs> hug mate oh yeah yeah Ah, oh, good mate. Good on, good on. Well, I think I'll uh, pop, pop the uh, pop the kettle on. Oh, sounds like a play. No. So, Laura. Yes. What? What do? What do? Yeah, tell us about thing you do. Uh, Laura K. Buzz, that's where I am everywhere. Go go search me everywhere at Laura K. Buzz. Um, there was a video I wanted to put on YouTube and I've been having like a week of battles trying to get on YouTube. So if you want to see me talk for 40 minutes about how Everstones in Pokemon are basically puberty blockers and Ash Ketchum would be a supporter of trans rights and medical access, you can go watch that in like five parts on TikTok. Uh, so go... Go watch a 40 minute video that I had to chop up and put on TikTok, a format that video was not designed for. Uh, I really like that video, I'm glad it's out there somewhere, go watch it. Is this Laura K. Buzz pretty much everywhere, what about you? What about me? Well, I can be found at Linktree, that's linktr.ee slash janiac, J-A-N-E-I-A-C. You can find all my music under bed Bedroom Programmer, there's a link for that on there. You can find t-shirts on my red bubble. There's some, some fabulous little designs over there. You can check them out. Patreon.com slash Radio. Uh, for as little as a dollar a month, you can help me justify 
all the work I do with the editing and the making of things and the putting content together and streaming and all the other stuff and yeah you, you can you can help out with that that would be much appreciated i had a little bit of a, a slump pre-unicorn dance party as is often the case and mm. um, i would love to get back up to my, my high of 28 patreons Ooh. yeah i'm just three away you can get me back up to my, my highest height if you would like to care to support me and i would super appreciate that uh, i think that's everything thank you very much everyone for your continued support uh, I love you and you're good. <gasps> and if you like the show and you can't support us, consider maybe a share. Yeah, I'm doing the YouTuber <gasps> thing. Like, like, share, hit the hit the bell, the, the yeah, notification bell. You don't bell. have to hit like. Remembering to hit like is a pain in the bum. But maybe if you like, hey, I listen to this show and I like it, you can tell people about it. That would be yeah. nice. I'd appreciate that. Oh, uh, thank you very much. <gasps> we'll see you again sometime. Laura, will you sing us out? <laughs> Until next time, be as Stranger.